hasn't emailed me this morning. I don't see anything. So, okay, great. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our September 23rd um, uh, Colorado Forest Health Council Legislative Committee. And we have a brief agenda today, but we're um, we'll get rolling so that when our guest, um, I'm not sure if Representative Cutter is the 720, but um, whenever Representative Cutter comes. No. I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. This is Julie Stenselot. 720 is me. Okay, great. Well, let's just um, let's just take a roll call and see how many we have. And if we have quorums, we can do the other items. So, um, uh, so uh, Courtney, I guess you can, we'll just, Jody Scheib, McNally, aye. Aye. Julie, do you want to? Julie Stencil, aye. Hillary Cooper, aye. Mr. Morgan, you want to do? Yeah, Mark Morgan, aye. Christina? Christina Burry, aye. Christy Belton? Christy Belton, aye. Then Commissioner Tilsdale. You're on mute. We can't hear you. Is there, what is the motion? No, we're just uh, doing a roll call. Oh, oh, Ben Tisdell, present. Present, okay, go. great. Um, Angela, you're on our council as well. Do you want to say good morning? Nice to see you. I'm actually not on the council, technically. Oh, we'll just um, chase it. Okay. <laughs> <I'm> flattered that <laughs> you think I am. So I think we have, do we have a quorum yet? Great. Yes, you do. Awesome. Well, when um, Representative Cutter comes, we'll introduce ourselves to her. So, and we made sure, do we want to recenter the link just in case? Could you do that, Courtney, just in yes. case she's, because I, I know how it is, like you jump on and you're like, where is it? So, um, thank you for that. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, um, and we get a chance to look at the minutes, any uh -huh. um, comments, edits, concerns? Great, I'll welcome a motion to approve the minutes. I'll move to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Great, um, any further discussion? Great, with motions on the table, all those in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 Any of those opposed? Great. All right. Well, we will um, uh, prove the minutes. And now we're just waiting. For, I just thought we would make mostly our agenda um, for Representative Cutter. So we'll just wait and see if she comes. Does anybody have anything they'd like to just um, add um, for any of us to chat, chat about? How is everyone doing? It's Friday. I have one thing that's worth a mention, I guess. The sure. State, <clears throat> the state got their, <clears throat> excuse me, the state got their grant program out for funded at $15 million. And I think that's, that's a huge improvement and opportunity for, there's a lot of money coming down right now in different grant programs and the ability to, bundle them and channel them and use them wisely and get some work done on the ground. I think it's, I think it's a, a big, big opportunity for everybody on, on parallel in the history of the state. So maybe we can <clears throat> actually affect some landscape scale management efforts. And what was that grant grant for? There are several of them out right now, but the state matching fund grant, Okay, uh, and that was funded at fifteen million. I believe it was about six million the year before, and I believe the year before that was like under a million dollars. So that's a it comes from the feds through. But uh, I was in hopes that there's McCombs could be here today and give us a little more information on it. Isn't that the that Can I pause? The 
Can oh. I just pause you just a second? Um, Representative Cutter's texting me. Oh, great. there she is. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry, she was texting me and I was like, go ahead, Hillary, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just saying, isn't that the firmware grants that the, the cycle was just, or the uh, you know applications were just open for the next two months? Right. I think that's, yeah, right. For forest restoration, uh, workforce capacity, maybe not workforce capacity, uh, fire mitigation, there's like four different categories. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next, to our guest speaker today. Um, thank you, um, 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 Representative Cutter, Lisa Cutter, for joining us today. I hope you can hear us okay. We'll go around and introduce ourselves, um, and we really appreciate your time today. Can you hear us okay? Representative Cutter, you're on mute. <laughs> And I, I told Representative Cutter we just wanted to hear about um, some of the, the bill that she pulled and some of the other legislation. And we're going to keep this kind of a very informal chat um, just to hear her thoughts and and have a, a conversation. It doesn't actually look like she's muted. So I don't know. Maybe she's having sound issues. I think she is muted, actually. I see the little microphone crossed out. Oh, okay. Um, I don't see that. Cutter okay. at the bottom of your screen, there should be a microphone. Um, if you are looking at all of our tiles um, right at the bottom, is that microphone next out or no? No. Sorry. You could call in too um, in the calendar invite. There should be a call in number. So now you're on twice, but still muted. Interesting. I know. I know. I oh, there you go. You're, we can hear you now, I think. You can hear me can twice. Hear me twice. I'm, I'm so sorry. sorry. Oh, there oh, it is. One of the screens disappeared, and I couldn't. I couldn't I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's a great way to start a Friday. <laughs> so good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> We'll Have go around second. and introduce ourselves. Thank you so much for being here today. And uh, um, and we're just really uh, glad to have you. Um, happy public lands to everyone, lands day to everyone. I'm up here at Horse Tooth doing some barbed wire removal volunteer work with some of our residents and nice. doing some things tomorrow. So just really glad to have this meeting and, and have this conversation. So I'll start off, um, uh, Representative Cutter, I'm uh, Lambert County Commissioner Jody Shag McNally and the chair of this committee and uh, proud uh, member and very great grateful to be on the Colorado Forest Health Council. Commissioner Tisdale. So um, Representative Cutter, it was fun to hang out with you back in July when that day when the Capitol had to be evacuated. We had a fun time at um, what was the uh, Quiznos, the original okay. Quiznos. Yes. yes. <laughs> So good to see you. Good morning. You Commissioner Cooper. Good morning. Hillary Cooper, San Miguel County Commissioner. Mr. Morgan. Mark Morgan, Morgan Timber Products, Colorado Timber Industry Association. Good to meet you. Good to see we met before, but good to see you today. We have met. <laughs> good to see you too. Yeah. Christy. Christy Belton. I'm a rancher and U.S. Forest Service grazing permittee in South Springs. Nice to meet you. Um, sorry, I've got lost my screen. Uh, Christina. Good morning, Christina Burry, Denver Water. And um, Julie's. Good morning, Julie Stenzel. I'm Assistant General Counsel with Excel Energy. I hold the utility seat. And then I'll have uh, Angelo and, Angela and Courtney introduce themselves. Hi, Rep Cutter. Uh, Angela Bogue, Assistant Director for Climate, Forest Health, and Energy at the Colorado Department of Natural Resources. I know you. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi, Representative 
Cutter, my name is Courtney Young, and I'm the Wildfire Mitigation Program Facilitator with the Department of Natural Resources, and I'm just supporting the council with meeting and meeting notes and other admin duties. Awesome. Did I miss anybody? All right. Well, we, again, welcome and thank you so much for your time today. We know how super busy you are and seems like things are gearing up really fast for this next session already. And so we'll just turn it over to you. Again, it's informal. We just want to, we'd love to hear from you about your thoughts and the and the legislation um, that you've been um, working on and then just um, open up for, for your questions for us and just a, a conversation. So thank you so much for being here and I'll help you field questions. So if that helps out. So that's great. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for another rough start this morning. Thank you guys for um, inviting me. I, I, um, I mean, I guess just to start off, I'll say I was really excited to see, um, to have your presentation this year, uh, you and the department of public, uh, safety did you know both presented actual tangible ideas for bills to move forward and i thought that was or you know direction and i don't think i don't think i've seen that presented the same way in past um wildfire years and so i think that was super super helpful heading in and having a real solid idea of what the experts the people working in this space all the time and really digging in um what you guys thought so that was really helpful i was reviewing um some stuff last night it's been a little bit of a um whirlwind because we right because it's all happened so quickly because it's an election year and lots of us have been focused on that um but i still you know still wanted to participate and be um focused on legislation moving forward so so let's see um the things that you guys presented really did make a difference have you all seen the um the bills that were moving forward that we're forwarding yeah um, and, and it's been interesting. I've already gotten some analysis from other groups on what you presented. And so it's been interesting because uh, it's way different perspective, but I can talk to you about that later. So I'd love to um, have you keep presenting, but thank you. Okay. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, I'd love to hear. So the bills that we just, we pulled a few off the table, but um, in fact, one ended up merging. Sonia Hawkes lewis Senator Hawkes lewis and I were working on different prongs of the workforce thing and we merged them. Did you guys all see that? Have you all had a chance to look at some of the legislation? Okay, so so we were originally, um, that really made an impact. And I know that was um, from your group largely, forest, uh, you know, forestry and um, internships and just workforce development overall. And so we're really excited about about that. So Sonia, Hake, uh, Senator Hawkes Lewis and I are moving a bill that will, um, that will provide i'm going to pull it up here so i can be sure i don't miss any of the elements um that but originally I, the reason we ended up um merging them oh and i'm not finding the right page but that's okay I, the reason we ended up merging them is because she had um the piece on just the um the equipment the um technology um what is the word i'm looking for you know the um the simulator yes that's the word. thank you the simulator and um and I just had the workforce piece and we decided that it made sense to combine those obviously. So it, it should be pretty robust and I'm really um, hoping we can get this passed. We've got um, expanding the existing forestry programs, including wildfire mitigation, creating a new forestry program within the community college system um, at, at uh, Colorado Mountain College. And then the harvesting simulator to train students, which may it might actually be shared among programs. Um, and it includes funding for the forestry programs within the community college system. And what else does it include? Um, creates timber forest health and wildfire mitigation industries workforce development program. I guess I should start at the top. And it provides re partial reimbursement to timber business and forest health or wildfire mitigation entities for the cost of hiring interns. Do we like that? <laughs> um, that really, really, that part of the presentation was really clear. I do remember in past years um, talking a little bit about workforce, and it really rose to the surface for us this year. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, what else does it do? Uh, we'll end up transferring a million from the general fund to the wildfire and mitigation capacity development fund for all of these things. So. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get the funding we need. I know they just had the budget forecast the other day and things could be weird, um, but I haven't had a chance to dive into that yet. 
and I do think there's some recognition that this kind of stuff is really important. Um, we can provide all the programs and grants and funds we, we want, but if we don't have the workforce behind it, then it's not going to matter much. And this is a planning piece that we need to do to, to set us up for the future. Um, let's see. It also directs the State Board for Community Colleges and Occup Occupational Education Board to administer the recruitment of wildfire fi fire prevention and mitigation educators program, so a recruiting program, to increase the number of qualified educators. So those are the primary pieces. Um, does that, does that uh, coincide with what you all were thinking would be useful? I mean, we, you know, we have a while for introduction, obviously, so we're happy to entertain conversation to, to finalize it and further refine it. Um, sounds really um, spot on for me. I, I'm super excited to hear about it. And I, I love the idea that you guys are combining this together. So um, it's it sounds like that would be um, a great way to kind of um, bring it up. But um, I'll um, let my other colleagues speak up. Um, Commissioner Cooper. Thanks. Thanks, um, Rep. Cutter. I think uh, this is a I mean, this is this is very much needed, and um, it's stuff that we have been talking about. The other piece that we've been talking about is really the importance of um, building that social license within community to get the work done, and that's through collaboration and facilitation. And you know, those community meetings can be extremely time consuming, and if they aren't really well led, um, well managed. Uh, and bringing the right people to the table, um, it's hard to, in, in some of our communities, it's hard just to get the license to get some of the work done in the beginning. So I don't know if this is the place for it. I mean, this is this workforce development is all very much needed, um, but just wanted to plant that seed of the uh, workforce or just, you know, the simple facilitation capacity for collaboration building is also needed within our communities around, around wildfire mitigation projects. So um, I, I don't have a really good handle on sort of, you know, maybe there's a lot of funds out there. Um, I know that we've been trying to hire facilitation. Uh, there are the wildfire mitigation groups around the region. Um, they have been getting some support, but it is something that is needed in many of our communities before we actually even get the work done or simultaneously. So Commissioner Cooper, are you, could you tell me a little bit more about like what that would look like? Are you saying that that somebody needs to just facilitate groups to work together and apply for these grants? And is that what you're? Well, and, and building the programs. I mean, I think um, Chiefy County is constantly, you know, held to this as kind of the gold standard of it. It took them several years and it actually took a local tax measure in order to get their program funded. But they had leadership within the community that brought all the right people to the table. They created a plan. They brought took it back to the community. They got feedback. Um, and now they're actually implementing uh, wildfire mitigation in a couple of their prioritized watersheds. Um, that's a very simplified, simplified version of, you know, how it went. I think people would have other uh, opinions, but um, that it takes a while to to get to that point where you can actually get work done on the ground, and that you know build it build up is it, or that um, those partnerships mm -hmm. um, with the agency and the local community and you know the industry and the conservation community and wildlife and um otherwise you you know you may have the workforce capacity which we need to develop too to actually get the job done and they line up a project and the community says whoa 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 not in my backyard or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um i don't know if that's through this bill i'm not suggesting that sorry i don't have any really specific recommendations but just something to just wanted to plant that seed that's awesome. That's why these conversations are so important. I'm really happy to be here and to to get a chance to talk with you further because I don't, you know how um, like the ship has sailed for uh, interim committee legislation at this point, but um, sometimes it just takes a little bit for things to percolate. But I really, I like, I like what you're saying and I'm starting to think a little bit about that. And I don't know if it'd be something we could do this year, but um, I mean, maybe, but maybe next year, you know, that's just something to consider, to continue considering. I like, um, we went to the, I don't know, this is a little far afield, but we went to the um, 
Center for Excellence yesterday. And it was really interesting to me how I was really excited about how um, integrated the approaches and how they, they they're they trying to move things um, to more of a, um, I would say centralized, but it's, it just seems like a very thoughtful approach and collaboration, the way everyone is working together to tackle suppression and, and um, all those things. And so I, I think this sort of has the, I mean, it's sort of along the same lines, right? Just collaborating and looking at ways to, um, for all the agencies and all the different parties to work together. So anyway, that was rambling, but I, I, you planted a really good thought and I appreciate that. I'm taking notes and we'll, we'll take it back to the group and kick it around. Mr. And Morgan. stay in touch as it evolves. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Good. Mr. Morgan. I think your, your bill is proposed is excellent. I Thank think you. it meets almost all the needs that we have. I think uh, obviously the devil will be in the details, but always. I think uh, always, I think it's it's a huge first start in it and I appreciate it very much and I thank you for your efforts. Uh, thank you for saying that. I know you've done, you've um, testified before and had some great, uh, great feedback and thoughts for the committee. So I'm glad that you- uh, I've been on this for a long, long, long time and it, Really is gratifying to see some movement here. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Tisdale. There we go. Off mute. Thank you. Um, Elisa, thank you for for putting forward the um the kind of the extension of the the um the fire commission um Wooly Code board idea. And I I, I definitely understand the strategy behind pulling it from out of the interim committee and into um, further stakeholder process and um, then introducing it as one of your first five bills in this session. Um, and, and so I, as you know, I'm on the, the fire commission along with uh, Leslie Dahlkemper and, and um, looking forward to to seeing this move forward, and I, I know that there are going to be there's a, the, lots of stakeholder sessions around this, and we've seen you know, CML um, have some reaction even to um, modified versions. But it'll be a an interesting journey to see it's, how far we can go without watering down the concept and still keeping it true to form. Um, I am interested also in how the this representative snyder's um idea might intersect with this and it, to some extent there might be overlapping maybe not necessarily in time but the, his idea seems to be something now in the interim until the wui code board would come into place within two years with more developed rules what what are your thoughts? And are these conflicting? Are these complementary? Or are these um, concepts, can they work together? Or we'll see on the 29th, I guess, whether his idea floats to the top of the, um, the finalized um, interim committee bills. Um, thank you, Commissioner Tisdale. And thank you for all your great work on the Fire Commission as well. Um, I know that, that there's been a lot of uh, a lot of work behind forwarding some of the recommendations. So thank you. Um, that's an interesting question. I just was talking to Representative Snyder the other day, and um, I was, I was just, I just pulled up the bill again, and I was looking. I think one point of clarification I wanted to make, and I, I believe in looking at this that that it's that it's correct that it this would be for existing well it is it does say developers and home builders that's not true but it would also apply to existing home and the, you know a code board obviously would not apply to existing um things and i think that's that is really we've tried to get at that a couple different ways with tax incentives and stuff for existing homeowners to try and help them harden their homes because i know that's quite and mitigate their properties because i know that's quite um a costly endeavor and it's um it's tough. So I like his bill from that perspective. And I, I, I think I've sort of been kicking it around too and haven't had a, a chance to really fully develop my, my thoughts on this and dive in, but it, it feels like it could totally be um, compatible. It does feel like this would be a way that a way forward for now, while we um, really dug in and, and developed a WUI code board that could work for everyone, because that is, it is going to be a big bite. I mean, it's going to be 
um, and a process for sure to get that um, code board developed. So I see them, um, for now, I see them as being compatible. Did you have different thoughts about that? No, I see them as being compatible as well. And if we can address the existing construction, which um, is, is I think, one of the biggest questions that hasn't been touched yet, and incentives or or something to to help retrofit existing construction would be awesome. I might see if I can drop in the chat or else maybe just send back out through um, Courtney or Angela here. Um, we recently came across a really good, <clears throat> just a couple of like a pamphlet, but a graphic mm -hmm. kind of description of what retrofitting existing construction involves. And it's a, something Sonoma County developed. Oh. Um, and I've got it here. I'll, I'm going to see if I can drop it in the chat. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah and I mean, yeah. I wonder if it would make sense. And again, like I'm still developing my thoughts on this as well, but I wonder if it would make sense to focus his program more. And I don't know if he'd be willing to do this, but more on current homeowners as, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, that's such a mixed bag, right? Developers, if you're going to move into the WUI, it might, you might, it might be, I don't want to you know, go out on a limb here and offend anybody, but it might be, it might be okay that you have to spend a couple thousand more. And I mean, I'm talking of things outside of affordable housing. That's a whole different category that we yeah. need to consider. But, you know, if you're going to move into a high risk area, then maybe it's not a bad thing that you have to spend a couple thousand more dollars or whatever um, to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just uh, while I've, I don't want to take up all of our available time, but one thing I wanted to to talk about um, for the interim committee, but it wasn't published yet, and it still is not, but it's going to be in the next week, I believe, is the, um, the there is a national 90-day strategic pause on prescribed burns that the state or that the National Forest Service um, imposed back in May. Um, and I was on one of the two, uh, it's called an FLA team, a facilitated learning analysis teams. So the one that occurred um, in Uray County, unfortunately, at that time, it comes out with lessons learned and recommendations for prescribed burning, which really touches on the conversation here at Forest Health. Mm -hmm. And I know that Director McCombs is interested in, in talking further about um, the how to make prescribed burns safer and more effective is one of the primary treatments for both forest health and fire mitigation so upcoming topic when once those are published um we can certainly talk more about them yeah um, i'm interested in that as well we were trying to run a, a uh, prescribed burn bill last year but pulled it i think it was perry and i were working on that with um, western resource advocates and um we pulled it because of the um the all the um the incident i can't remember where it was but you you the prescribed burn and the firefighters that yeah so we just thought it might be better to run it another year but i'm interested in that topic for sure because i've heard at, from the community that it could be a really useful tool great well thank you commissioner tisdale i think we'll move on we have some other people um, with their hands raised but i quickly want to share with um with you uh, representative cutter um i have um put in the chat um, we also have a very large collaborative working on fire mitigation. It's called the NOCO Fire Shed Coalition in Larimer County, and it has our federal, state, and local partners. And it also is doing some of that similar work that um, Commissioner um, Cooper had shared. And uh, we're getting a lot of feedback from that. Um, and, so, and also, if you're interested in looking at some of those projects or meeting with some of those folks in the fire shed, um, I'm sure I can arrange that for you. But it has, okay. um, you know, several counties and even municipalities, cities, um, our Ember Alliance, all these large partners. So I just thought I'd put that in there. It's a, um, we have success with the Shambhala um, during the Cameron Peak, how that worked. And so I just wanted to share that with you. So I think, um, so I'll just let you look at that. You can always call me offline and ask me questions later about that. And if you'd like to see that, I'd be more than happy to arrange a tour or a meeting. Um, I think Christina had her hand up next and then Christy, thank you. Thank you, Representative Cutter, for just what you've done so far to elevate um, the issue of workforce capacity. I think that the bill that you've proposed is, is absolutely going to help that, and just thanks for that. Along the same lines of workforce capacity challenges, what I've heard 
um, for most of the forestry partners is affordable housing is the number one concern. Um, so I don't, I don't have a suggested recommendation for you for that. It's just something that, um, that remains to be a, a huge barrier in terms of workforce capacity. Um, and then getting to the, the social license um concerns as well what we're hearing from folks in summit county is that they have um uh people who are like short-term leases renters who are interested in doing mitigation work however they don't qualify for any i guess most of the programs because they don't own the the home um, so just wanted to bring those concerns to your attention. Um, it's just things that, that I'm discovering as we're having conversations around workforce capacity barriers, as well as social license barriers. Thank you. That's great feedback. I appreciate that. And the, the affordable housing is just, it's interesting how things are so intersectional, right? If we can't do, if we can't take care of affordable housing, then um, no matter what we do in workforce capacity, it's not going to happen. So we have been doing some big things at the state level. I'm sure you you may be aware of some of the things um, we're trying to work on, but it always takes a little while for, for those to actually bear fruit. So it's something we're definitely watching. Good feedback. Okay. Christy, Christy. Just, just a statement more than anything. Um, as we're talking about um, any sort of WUI regulations. Mm -hmm. um, for, for me as a member of the council, um, I, I believe that that sort of moves away from our mission of forest health. So I just wanted to make that statement that, um, you know, for WUI and regulation type stuff, um, I believe that that's a little bit out of our scope, my personal opinion. And thank you for the work that you're doing. Thanks. Thank you, Christy. I think uh, Commissioner Tisdale was just bringing that up because he was on the fire commission, but I'm sure he can continue that conversation. Anyone else, any co uh, questions or comments? No. Mr. Morgan. Just one quick comment on uh, any form of uh, regulations in the past one of the big things that we did here in colorado was for water quality for uh best forest management practices and we went through a process there and i've kind of been involved in that mm -hmm. for about 30 years and uh throughout the west many states have mandatory best management practices and a lot of them have voluntary educational programs and as far as compliance for the number of people for the for the amount of compliance as reviewed by independent boards they found that the educational voluntary programs actually had a higher compliance rate than the uh, mandatory legal programs so i think there may be a parallel there that you might want to look at to push the uh, educational side of it and the uh, the voluntary side of it it's always a better way to get to where you're going if you can possibly do it that way and that proved very much true with best management practices so just a suggestion i appreciate that and please feel free to keep to reach out to me directly if you have continued thoughts as we move forward with the process um i i yeah, I mean, that's a good, that's a really good um, flag. I come from a background of public relations and communication. So I'm a big believer in educating and, and um, you know, how, what a, what an important piece of um, the whole overall picture that really is. So thank you for bringing that up. Representative Cutter, um, what kind of questions or thoughts or what would you like to share with us as a council and as individual members? And, and then my second question is, how can we support um, as a council, how can we support you and um, the other leaders on, on this legislation? How, how would you like, um, how does that look? I don't even know if we've had that conversation as a council. 
No, that's a great, um, I'm just trying to think if I have any specific questions for you. Well, I will ask if there's any other of the legislation that's been proposed that you um, have strong feelings about or input that you want to share. And I don't know if you've had a, I mean, that might be a conversation for after we fully present the bills. Um, they've been posted, but um, you know, I don't know if anyone's had a chance to dive in. So that's a question. I do have some comments from um, my staff, mm -hmm. um, Lori Hodges. Let me just see if I can pull that up. Um, I want to let's see if I can pull that up, and then um, I can um, see if anyone else has something to comment on. Then I'll look for my the things that my staff had brought up about, um, uh, and I found it. But I can okay, I can do that if that would help. Um, sure. Hold on. Let me. <clears throat> oh, thanks for posting that, Angela. Um. So. Um, can you hear me okay? So mm -hmm. it was, um, th so this is, um, I think um, Justin Watsell from our emergency services presented in front of you all. Um, it's the uh, recommendations for evacuation modeling and then the update evaluation modeling and um, create pre-established routes to ensure residents can better, can be better informed. Um, and so the concerns from our, um, our emergency management um, manager, Lori Hodges, as you know, is pretty well um, known at the state and along with Justin um, White, Whitetail, who I think testified um, or presented that day that I was there, um, that requires counties to designate evacuation routes in hurricane states established, I'm going to just read what she wrote me, um, in hurricane states established aggravation, evacuation routes make sense, but in a wildfire community, we don't know where the threat will be coming from or where it'll be going. So established evac routes could place community members directly in the path of fire. So with the pre-established routes, people may choose to take a route in a flash flood instead of seeking high ground, which could put them in greater danger. And so for some reasons, um, pre-established routes aren't always the best option and therefore should they don't feel they should be mandated. They think as an alternative, um, that the work done by our Larimer Emergency Telephone Authority and emergency services folk would be appropriate. Inappropriate. We have pre-established neighborhood polygons that have been established and dispatched. So if we have a strong, fast-moving event, that notification will go out immediately and dispatch center can provide the evacuation details specifically for that polygon. Um, and then we have, we just think that could benefit every community in the state and be used for more than one hazard, like tornadoes, flash floods, wildfires. And um, also we're really been doing a lot of outreach in the community. We're having another emergency prepared expo and we've been out at almost every, um, even at the Latin A Hispanic Heritage Month, we were at that um, community event handing out weather radios and evacuation kits and trying to just constantly be as much as we can in the community. So just to share that with you. So I don't know if you have thoughts on that, but that's was what um, came from my emergency services folks. And um, yeah. I really, really appreciate that, Commissioner. Um, actually, I do have thoughts about that too, and I'm gonna. Um, I'm eager to hear the bill presented and and have discussion about it when we meet because that you know when I was thinking about um, what topics bubbled up this year, you know, workforce. I mean, it's just a big problem, right? There's there's so many ways to approach the wildfire issue and forest health, and so. But this year, you know, we've done a lot of mitigation, and this year it feels like evacuation bubbled up. The codes, of course, discussion. Um, um, and what else? The, uh, workforce evacuation, those two things really, um, really rose to the surface. Um, but in terms of evacuation, I've heard the exact thing, same things from my fire community. You know, we have there there's a lot um, there's a lot of nuance to that. And so I'm I'm eager for that conversation because I'm not I don't disagree. And so I, I don't know how the bill will roll out. Do you um, I believe it's I believe that's also Representative Snyder. Have you? Okay, so I hope that um, you all reach out with thoughts for all these bill sponsors and um, because we certainly have a lot of respect for, for this group and for the work that you've done and, um, you know, continuing to shape things. But I, I, yeah, I'm eager to hear from him as well. Um, yeah, I, I know that's not quite what a Forest Health Council, but she's about the other bills. And I know I got some strong um, response from my emergency services and my emerging management manager and so i thought well all right i'll put that in there but i think i'm pretty sure they're going to be reaching out to um okay Cider. but um and i think the other thing for me just i'm going to take a privilege as a chair and i'll have mr morgan talk um i think just that that good neighbor authority and some of those other um things are really important um i think if there's so many pieces to how you know, there's the funding, there's the capacity, there's the workforce, there's the housing for the workforce. 
there's um, you know this ability like, like um, Commissioner Cooper brought kind of that authority or those relationships to get so we can work on this together and I think um, there's examples that she gave and also what we gave with the fire the fire shed coalition um, it's just um, a lot of a lot of pieces to come together so I do really think that you've got this what you have crafted and what you're working on is spot on and I'm really super excited and just want to again thank you for your work we I really feel this is um, representing what our conversations we've had in this for um, this committee so thank you Mr. Morgan real quick on uh, your in your disaster response or whatever for fires fires generally uh, for evacuation everybody's aware of them you've got a lot of smoke you've got a lot of activity and it's generally for a relatively short period of time oftentimes you get more death and damage from the damage to the watersheds afterwards from the flooding and, mm -hmm. and that risk window for the floods from a major wildfire continues on for years and years and years so i think the thing there is is you've got one risk that's relatively short term for evacuation and then you've got a really long term risk from the flooding end of it so i think there's two separate problems there as well that's a good that's a good point yeah i think i echo that too i i know one area in my um community my district um, just below the Cameron Peak burn scar, which is also impacted by the 2013 flood, I think had 25 flash floods from in that small area. Um, and I'd be more than happy to walk you through there. We rebuilt some of the, the roads in the in Lobbitz, the co comp complication of what's happening way up high in the burn scar. But then when they wash out and they get the culverts, that's a private driveway and we have trouble having, you know, that private versus public interest, but they can't get out of their driveway. Okay. But we have a Part of that road is county maintained for public access and then it comes out onto our highway from from um from loveland up through glenhaven to estes and so that comes out and does some damage out on that state highway because it just kind of continues downstream and so um i have some residents that um i go up and i about once or twice a month i drive through there and walk up and just see how it's looking and it changes even last year they had several and it's just that fl the flooding after the fire and uh, we're very fortunate we haven't had much more and just that two loss of life earlier this year with the teacher from Littleton and stuff. And we're just hoping it continues to, we continue, everyone's working so hard and fast to kind of get that done. And so um, just again, appreciate your time today. Um, anyone else have anything else they'd like to add or wanna, um, I know um, Angela shared the list of um, legislation I wanted to see what your thoughts on where the nursery, I know the governor came and toured that with um, Director McCombs. And um, I know beyond the, like the aerial mulching we've been doing in our county, mm -hmm. um, that's been pretty massive effort between the city of Greeley and other partners. And then this planting, we've seen some of the planting from last year looking really well. Um, I don't know what your thoughts on are increasing and helping that nursery so they can um, meet kind of the need. What are your thoughts on that? I am all in favor. <laughs> I think that's really, really important. I mean, the, I I think a lot. I'm not a scientist, and so I, you know, I don't, I, I don't know um, the perfect balance. But I think a lot about um, that that wildfire and climate change um, cycle, right? That that whole, you know, wildfire feeds climate change, and climate change is is creating more wildfire, and it's just this, and so you know, planting trees is clearly an important piece of that, something that's going to um, make an impact. And so, um, yeah, I'm I'm very supportive of that. I was hugely supportive of the bill last year, and I, I would like to see more funding because it seems like it sounds like there's still some pretty significant need in that space. Wonderful. Well, um, I'll go back to the other question I had about how can we help you um, going forward and support um, some of the things you're doing as, as a committee? Um, you know, is there going to be stakeholder involvement? Um, can we come to that? Will that help for us to be there? Um, what kind of things can we do to help with that, your legislation? I am really grateful for that question. So, so I have to confess that up until this point, I've sort of, um, I, I, you know, things have been, have been, um, the balls are all still in the air <laughs> there's other people forwarding stakeholding um like representative or senator Hawkes lewis has been working uh, more on the um 
on the uh, workforce bill, just because I am in a pretty um, a pretty tough election cycle right now. And so I've sort of been um, focused on that. But I'm really eager to dig in immediately and start um, being more present and, and having more stakeholder meetings. So um, apps, I would absolutely welcome the voices. Sometimes, I'm sorry to say, sometimes we don't know what we don't know, and I don't include the right people, or you know, the right voices aren't at the table, or we miss something, um, not because we don't care. So please, please be proactive. If you see something that I'm um, working on, and you have strong opinions or, or knowledge about something that you want to share, I am always open. I, I really do have a deep respect for um, what you all do and and um, the work and, and the backgrounds, individual unique perspectives you bring. So I would really, I would just ask you, please reach out to me if you have anything you want to share. We don't, you know, if we don't know, we can't address it. So um, that's really important. So we'll definitely continue stakeholding. So the two bills that I'm forwarding, and hopefully they'll both well, I guess there's only one coming through the committee now. Hopefully, is the uh, workforce bill. Oh, and I think I'm. I think my I'm on actually on the um, uh, the investigation bill with um, Senator Janelle as well. So we'll definitely be diving in and doing a lot more work um, as it progresses. We like to have them as, uh, in decent shape before we um, we bring them up to committee, but um, obviously there's there's a long ramp up to session, and so there'll be lots more opportunity. Wonderful. Well, we're about at our time, um, and I just um, again I'll just say, does anyone else have any comments or questions? Or great. Well, we just want to thank you for your time today and for your willingness to come and talk with us about this. We're really super grateful for you listening to some of our thoughts and concerns and ideas. And, and, um, and we're really grateful to have this opportunity for us all to collaborate. As you can see, we're a pretty, pretty uh, great bunch. We'd like to listen and talk and share ideas and, di and different perspectives. So um, just want to thank you for your time today and just really appreciate you being here. Does anyone else want to say thank you or any comments? <laughs> Alex, just thank you again for opportunity to chat. Thank you very much. Well, I need Agreed. to be thanking thank you. you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just echoing the thanks. Appreciate your time and the information you shared. Well, I really owe you thanks because you guys really um, – your perspectives really are important. And I really, I love the um, opportunity to just have a conversation. No one wants to hear me present <laughs> for a half an hour. It's great to just um, hear what you think and have a little back and forth about it. I think that's much more valuable for all of us. So I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity and I would love to connect anytime. Call me, I'm happy to chat more and hear what you guys are thinking as, as um, all this evolves. So I'm excited to be part of it. Wonderful. Well, a happy Friday and thanks again for your work. And I know you're super busy. So again, we really appreciate your time and we'll be in touch. Have a great yes. day. You too. Happy weekend, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you for your time. I hope that was helpful. That's, I found that, found that very exciting and, and um, uh, reinforcing that we're kind of had some great progress and great conversation. And um, I don't know how that looks, Angela. If we are going to be helping testify or be involved with the stakeholders or what does that look like? What's that process? Or do we have to talk about that as a full council? Yeah, great question. So um, I would say, depending on which bills make it through this interim committee, right? So and just a reminder for everyone, and I think we sent this out in the email, but this Wednesday, the interim committee will be meeting to vote on those five bills that they advance. Um, if a bill does not get advanced, it does not necessarily mean it's dead because uh, a legislator could make it part of their five, um, so they could introduce it independently. Um, and then I think, um, you know, because the council has already voted uh, to unanimously support the several concepts that are showing up in these bills, I think you could assume that the whole council would be supportive of advocating for them. So for instance, the workforce development bill. Um, but I do still think that would probably require a vote um, by the full council once the actual bill is introduced. And so that would be timely for our um, sort of January or February meeting, depending on when that is scheduled. Um, 
And I think what it would look like is a vote by the full council to, you know, support certain legislation. And there may be other bills that the council would like to throw its weight behind. And then, um, you know, the council could sort of elect folks to provide testimony and whether those are agency staff um, or, you know, council members, uh, I think that would be fine. It would sort of function as it did, you know, Jody, when you presented to the interim uh, committee. So I think that's what the path forward looks like. I do think um, we'll have to do, and October might be the right time for it, but we also might wait till January, February, um, or have a separate one, but sort of a, just a bit of a training on the fact that individual members of the council may support certain legislation, um, you know, pri personally or privately that uh, is not supported by the broader council. And so in that case, you know, folks can still provide that support, go give independent testimony, et cetera, but they have to acknowledge that, you know, this is coming from, um, that they're in presenting independently of the council, if that makes sense. So, and I think everybody sort of gets that, but, um, but we just have to make sure that there isn't too much murkiness there um, so that everyone on the council feels like, you know, we're, um, we're operating uh, above board. No, I think that's excellent. That's why I asked that question because, um, you know, it's, um, we are on different, like um, Colorado counties incorporated and Colorado uh, counties and commissioners acting together. And then Mr. Tisdale is her commissioner Tisdale is on the fire commission. So we have other things that we'll be, um, talking about. So I just wanted to just, I think it is, it'd be great to have that on, um, to, to clarify that because they always say be, um, um, being clear is being kind because it, you know, make sure that there's no, um, make sure we have things kind of stated that even if they seem obvious to make sure we're all on the same page. So. Right. And, and where I could see this being especially important is on some of those more controversial topics. So, you know, if a week we code board bill, for example, does move forward, I could see members of this Forest Health Council, for example, saying, um, you know, we should be supportive of this. I could see other members maybe not feeling that way. And so that's going to be, you know, a much more in-depth conversation that we have to have, um, which is, you know, part of the point of the council. Or maybe we're just, maybe that's just some, some bills that others um, support individually and separately on their other, with their other hat on. They take off this hat, put the other hat on and and put that on. So that's how I see that. But um, it would be great to have that clarified just to make sure. Well, so I hope this everyone felt that was um, a great conversation. Um, and I just got a text from her. She's very thrilled and um, um, really appreciate that. We are a great group. She really appreciated the conversation. So thank you all for um, the conversation. Um, so we're having another meeting in two weeks. Um, I was wondering if maybe um, we should just kind of leave it open and maybe we can have Director McCombs come and kind of share, catch up on what's happening with um, his with his work. And, and uh, I don't know, um, unless we want to take a break because we have the meeting next week um, with the Forest Health Council, do we want to wait a month and have a meeting? Because we don't have really anything pressing on the agenda. If there's an opportunity to update on the, um any information about the uh, prescribed burn conversation we might like flag that as a, a good upcoming topic um i i believe the um the the fla study that i was part of will be published within the next two weeks and once it is then we can actually talk about it and because that, that is a forest health thing i think as as much it's kind of in that overlapping region of forest health and wildfire mitigation um so i would love to have that discussion ben i would love to have that discussion I okay think it's a great topic so let's let's say this if it's supposed to come out soon um and we can have it before that meeting in two weeks should we go ahead and meet but if it's not out maybe we should wait and um since we have the forest health council meeting next week and have a meeting because um, we don't have to meet every two weeks. We've gotten a lot done and there's a lot kind of in flex and we'll have plenty of time to be very busy next year. What I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Let's just play it by ear. If it, if it comes out and there's an opportunity and we have time, if it doesn't fit in, we don't have to meet. Does that work for everyone? Okay, so I'll stay in touch with Courtney and Ben, um, Commissioner Tisdale, if you get that, can you send that to me uh, or send it to Courtney right away? Um, 
and because uh, technically, I guess, you know, um, you could set it to me as a commissioner, commissioner, but, um, and then we can kind of make a decision um, then. Does that make, I'll try to give as much time as possible to alert everyone. Does that sound okay? That sounds great. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to go back to moving barbed wire um, from our open space here and um, just really appreciate everyone's time. I'm really pleased that Representative Cutter could meet with us and I'm sure we'll have some more conversations with her. And I just want to wish you all a happy Friday and a beautiful National Public Land Day and weekend. So thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Oh, I guess we didn't adjourn, but oh well. Uh I guess we can just say we did. So, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.